Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to God is Speaking. Today, I want to share a quick word with you. You know, I have, um, prob I think I have six email addresses. And, you know, I was thinking this morning, one of my email addresses that I use the most, actually two of them, are always getting full. Like I'll go on there and they'll tell me it's 98% full and you you know, you need to delete some emails. And sometimes it gets to the point where some of my emails get kicked back because they can't get in because it's full. And one of the email addresses I've had probably for, I don't know, it has to be close to 20 years. And this email keeps, um, it stays packed and there's always hundreds of emails that have never been open. And so what I've been doing is that the email right now today has 71,757 emails and over 500 of them have never even been clicked on. So what I've been doing every day when I get up and it's almost full is that I go through and I spend a few minutes looking at, you know, something that's on there that I don't um, typically read or look at or open and I'll search that out say if it's a store or something like that, and then like 300 of them will come up from that one store and I'll delete them. And then I'll find something else and I'll search for, you know, say it's say it's Joanne Fabric. And I, and I say, well, I haven't been looking at their email. So let me search Joanne Fabric and I'll search it. And like 250 of the first uh, Joanne Fabrics will come up and I'll delete all those. And, and I spend time doing this every day, just deleting hundreds of emails from things that I haven't been reading lately. And so Today, when I was getting ready to do that, because it was full and because I'm expecting so many emails to come through and I don't want them to get lost because what typically happens is the, the emails that I am looking for where people are saying, I'm, I emailed you, did you get it? Um, or I tell people, email me for X, Y, and Z. And so I'm searching through all of this garbage. I'm searching through all of these different emails I don't read, looking for this person's name, looking for this topic, this subject that I'm looking for email from and I'm wasting a lot of time. So today I actually spent time doing what I should have been doing before. And instead of searching those things out and trying to eliminate the first 100, 250 of them so I can make some space in my email, I began to go through and unsubscribe, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. And what I was finding was I've wasted so much time deleting things that shouldn't be there. And then they keep coming back and they come back in masses because many of these places that you type in something, you're looking up something, they ask you for your email address. And once they do that, they start pounding you with emails, two, three, four, five a day, several a week. And it becomes a lot of clutter, a lot of garbage, a lot of trash. And it kicks the things aside that you're actually looking for. And so I began to delete not just the emails, but began to unsubscribe so they would stop it. So they would stop coming. And some of them would tell you it's going to take seven to 10 days because anything that is crowding your life, anything that is pushing out the things that you're supposed to be focused on, you need to unsubscribe. You need to drop it off. You need to get rid of it. You can't just keep letting it come back and you push it to the side for a minute or you eliminate it for, you know, a couple of hours and you know it's going to come back, it's going to come back, they're going to come back, it's going to come back. You have to totally unsubscribe, totally delete it. It's like a person who is struggling with a substance abuse issue and then they say, well, today I'm not going to use or I'm not going to go here. But then you know that later on, you know, you still have the phone number to the drug dealer. You're still, you know, um, holding on to these friends over here that get high. You still, you know, are going to the casino or wherever to, you know, to, to, uh, to, to eat dinner or whatever. And you know, you have a gambling problem. And so the thing is, is you begin to eliminate, unsubscribe, drop off, let go of everything that's attached to it. I don't want it trickling in. I don't want to see any more come in. I don't want to have to keep deleting. I don't want to delete it. And then four more come back later on in the day. I want it to stop. And you have to want some things to stop. That's crowding out the things you're supposed to be focused on. It's just like a person 
oftentimes, you know, women will talk about, they, you know, this is not all women. These are women that I've talked to that I counsel with that want to get married. They want to have a family. But then they spend so much time with the non-husbands, with the boyfriends that are unequally yoked, going out because they just want to have a good time because they feel like they just want to be somewhere. Somebody told them, you got to be out here doing this and you got to be out here doing that if you want to meet somebody. That is not the way God operates. What's for you is for you. And so this is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that somebody has to stay in the house, but I'm saying I see a lot of prophets or prophetess and pastors and preachers telling people, get out here. You got to live and how you're going to, you know, meet somebody. So these Christian women that want a good man, a good husband are out in the clubs and the casinos and the bars and everything trying to meet somebody, anybody. But that's not where God put your husband if you're a godly woman. He put your husband in the church. If you can't meet them in places that are godly and holy, then that's not the person God has for you. You don't have to step outside of where he called you to be in order for you to find somebody that's supposed to find you that's supposed to be in Christ. And so I say all this to say, get rid of the ones that aren't even a thing. They're not even that person. God didn't send them to you. You're not yoked together. They don't want to marry you. They're sleeping with you. They're doing this, that, and other. And the same thing for men. You know, just don't go around just being with anybody. If you want to have a family, if you want to eventually get married, then you start to, to look for that woman that God has prepared for you, that virtuous woman, that woman that is in Christ, that woman, you know, that that, that you know um, you want to spend the rest of your life with not just out here picking up girls. And it's not just about relationships. It's about anything. It's about your ministry. Are you out here just doing random things? You're just showing up for church and you busy yourself with stuff that God didn't tell you to do? Or are you seeking your calling and your mission and your assignment? Are you doing the things that you were instructed to do? Or are you just busy with a whole bunch of stuff? I see people, they're either not doing anything or they're doing a whole bunch of stuff that God never told them to do. And they lose lose their focus, their gift, their vision, and their dream. And so listen, we have got to stop the clutter. Get rid of the things and the people that aren't supposed to be in that space. And I'm, when I say get rid of people, I'm not talking about, you know, <laughs> in a mean way. I'm saying there's some people that aren't supposed to be uh, connected to you. You're not supposed to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Sometimes people are sucking out of you so that you can do their stuff and you never move forward into yours. You have to be very careful because there's some people that's placed in your path to mentor you, to help you, and you learn by, you know, growing under them what God is doing in you and it develops you. Other people are distracting you from your stuff so that you can do their stuff and they don't even know where they're going. Watch where people are going and watch what people are doing and watch how committed they are to it because if they're not committed to it, then why should you be more committed than they are? Even those of you that are in ministry, that are counseling with people and coaching with people. Are you more committed? Sometimes I find that I've been more committed than the person I'm talking to. I'm, you know, doing homework and, and I'm, you know, printing out this and I'm studying this so that I can minister to them and coach them and and and, and guide them, you know, and disciple them and, and counsel with them and they won't do the homework and they are not available when they're supposed to show up and, you know, and different things like that. These are things that you have to realize. There's some things that are distractions some things that are clutter, some things that aren't supposed to be there, some relationships and associations you're not supposed to be connected with. Get rid of the clutter. And what we're reminded of is a very familiar um, uh, story. Um, well, it's not just a story. It's, you know, this is when Jesus with, was, was with Mary and Martha in the book of Luke. And we're reminded, many of us have heard this over and over again, but we have to remember Mary and Martha were sisters. Jesus came over. They were having a meal. They were, they were going to have a meal, but Martha was busy serving. She was all about getting everything ready and, and doing this and doing that and cooking and whatever it is that she was doing. The scriptures let us know she was busy about it. But Mary Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and she was listening to Jesus and Martha got upset and said, you know, don't you see my sister's not helping me? Make her help me, basically is what she said. But Jesus let her know, and this is what it says in the New King James, Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you're worried and troubled about many things. 
Many things. It tells us, you know, in the Berean, it says you, you're you worried and upset about many things. The other one says, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things. When you look in here, it tells you, you know, over and over, it, it, these are distractions for her. It's not that, you know, don't prepare the meal, but it's, is the meal more important? Are you so consumed with what dishes you're going to use and how this is going to look and what color tablecloth than you are about listening to the word so you can grow, so you can move forward? Forward. And these are the things that encumber. These are the things that take over. He says, you take many pains and are troubled about many things. You, you worry and you fuss about a lot of things. I'm looking at a whole bunch of different versions here. And it tells us, you know, over and over, it's basically saying you, you're anxious and worried about a multitude of things. But then he goes on to say, Martha, um, uh, Mary has chosen that one needful thing. And that's what we need to look at today. What is the needful thing? What is it you're supposed to be focused on? What is it you're supposed to be doing? What is the goal? What is the mission? What is the assignment? What is the end result that you're looking for? And focus on those things. Think on spiritual things. Keep your mind stayed on God. Keep your eyes fixed on Christ. That's the word. And when we do that, God orders our steps. He directs our path because we're acknowledging him in all of our ways. Then you won't be easily distracted. Then you don't get encumbered by many things. Then you're not anxious about everybody else's issues. Now you can be effective in the things God called you to. Now you can receive what God has for you. Get rid of the clutter. Get rid of the things that are pulling and not adding. Get rid of, and, and I say that to, in, a, in a careful way because I hear a lot of people, especially pastors and preachers, and talking about, you know, somebody sucking away from you. They're taking away from you. Don't pour into them. If they're not doing for you, don't do for them. And I'm not saying that because as a Christian, you prefer others over yourself and, and you look to help others. But this is helping people so that they can get a relationship with Christ so they can begin to trust God for themselves. It's not people that are misusing your time and taking away from what it is that you're supposed to be doing. There is a difference and you need to know the difference between the two. I'm never saying don't help people. Don't walk alongside people. Don't help people get on their feet or minister to them where they're at. I'm saying don't enable people. Empower them. Help them learn how to do things and walk with them so that they can stand on this word and they can have a relationship with God so that he can begin to work in them. Joshua followed and served with uh, Moses until he was trained. Elisha with Elijah. But at some point, you've got to realize that there's some stuff that's just distraction. Some people that are just coming because the enemy sent them to distract you from what you're supposed to be doing. People begin to listen to a lot of voices that God didn't send to them. And when you're doing a whole bunch of stuff and you can't focus on the thing you're supposed to be doing, you got a whole lot of voices and it's not God because God is not the author of confusion. He's not going to overwhelm and overburden you so that you're ineffective in 15 things when you're only supposed to be effective in two things. Whatever it is he called you to, he wants you to focus on it because it's supposed to bring him glory. When you start and stop and start and stop because you're doing this and now you're going to do this, now you're going to go back to that, now you're going to go forward and try this and you're doing all these different things and you totally forgot the thing that he told you to do. And so we have to be careful, get rid of the clutter, the voices, the un... Uh, uh, unequally yoked associations and connections, the, the busyness uh, and begin to sit down and listen to God's instruction and delete and unsubscribe those things that are not supposed to be in your life, in your walk, in that assignment, in that mission because for some, you can't fulfill the thing that God called you to do because you're connected to the wrong people and so they have you doing what God told you to do the wrong way and as long as you don't do it God's way, it's not going to work, it's not going to produce, it's not going to do what God intended for it to to do. You need to connect with the people that God connected you with and stop looking at, oh, you know, these people know those people and this person knows how to do this and this person knows how to do that. Did God connect you to those people? Because if he didn't, it's time to unsubscribe. It's time for you to start fresh. It's time for us to stand on this word and trust in God and let him lead, guide, and direct. So get rid of the clutter. Get unsubscribed. Delete the things, the people, the associations in your life that shouldn't be there so you can move forward. The Bible even tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 about running this race and get rid of the weights. Lay aside the weights and the sin that so easily besets you. So whatever's weighing you down, whatever's blocking your path, whomever is there that is slowing you down, listen, it's time to unsubscribe. Now I should be able to look at my email and now whatever emails come today, 
in that one particular email address, I should be able to find them. And if I can't do it today, in a week, I'll be able to, when the rest of them start uh, to to um, to make that unsubscribe um, actually come into place where I'm no longer getting emails from those the 20 people or those 20 organizations or companies anymore. Now I'll be able to clearly see because I don't have clutter in the way, because I don't have distractions in the way, because I don't have things and people there that I'm not using and that's not useful for what it is that God told me to do. And so I encourage you, let's get busy and let's move forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless us all, Lord God, to hear your voice, to keep our minds stayed on you, our eyes fixed on Christ without the distractions actions, without the confusion, without the things, the access that you've not placed there. Help us, Lord God, to be steadfast and immovable. Help us to continue in the things you called us to. Help us to listen for your voice and the voice of a stranger we will not follow. Help us, Lord God, to know, have spiritual discernment and know what's from you and what isn't. Help us to walk forward and not look back. Help us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that we stay on the path that you set us in. And let's walk in that word. Father, I thank you that you're directing us. I thank you that you're guiding us. You never leave nor forsake us. And I thank Thank you that you have plans for us. Let them manifest in our life and help us to be all that you purpose us to be. We love and honor and praise you. Help our lives to bring glory to your name. Increase in the kingdom. And Father, we just thank you for your continued good work in us until Christ Jesus. We love you. We honor you. And we praise you for who you are, what you've done, and what you're doing. And we thank you in advance for what you're about to do. It is in the mighty, matchless, powerful name of Jesus that we pray and we say hallelujah and amen. God bless you. Don't forget Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have prayer on Facebook Live, Instagram Live. is Tony Brooke Brown, Pastor Tony Brown on Instagram. We would love for you to connect with us at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please share this message with somebody you know. Hit subscribe if you want to get updates when I upload videos. And don't forget to share the gospel with somebody who's not saved. Be a vessel, be an instrument that God works through for the uplifting of his kingdom. And get rid of the clutter. Get rid of the things that people and the places that don't belong on the path that God has sent you on. God bless you.